I have now detailed at some length why I believe that the third premise of the argument is, at the very least, unjustified and probably false. That project was largely defensive, intended to show that Stratton has not done the work necessary to justify the key premise of his argument. But now I want to switch gears and take the offensive against his argument by arguing that there is a fundamental inconsistency between the third and fourth premises of his argument, such that if the third premise is true, then the fourth premise is false. And conversely, if the fourth premise is true, then the third premise is false. It is important to emphasize that throughout this next section, I will not be challenging the truth of the fourth premise of the argument. As I have already pointed out, I reject the third premise of the argument. I am merely trying to point out that if someone affirms the third premise, then they cannot simultaneously affirm the fourth premise. In other words, the third and fourth premise are in conflict with one another. My argument runs as follows. 1. If one cannot be epistemically justified in believing that the necessary conditions for epistemic justification obtain, then one cannot rationally believe that any of their beliefs are epistemically justified. 2. Epistemic justification can be either probabilistic, inferential, or certain. 3. If libertarian free will is a necessary condition for epistemic justification, then the belief that libertarian free will obtains cannot be justified probabilistically or inferentially. 4. The belief that libertarian free will obtains cannot be justified with certainty. 5. Libertarian free will is a necessary condition for epistemic justification. 6. Therefore, the belief that libertarian free will obtains cannot be epistemically justified. 7. Therefore, one cannot be epistemically justified in believing that any of their beliefs are epistemically justified. Now obviously I am going to escape the conclusion of this argument by rejecting the fifth premise. But presumably the defender of the free thinking argument wants to maintain premise 5 as it is nearly identical to Stratton's premise 3, for otherwise they have to reject the free thinking argument. However, why should the defender of the free thinking argument accept the other premises of this argument? Well, the first premise shouldn't be too controversial. After all, justified beliefs depend upon the necessary conditions for epistemic justification being met. For example, if you believe that Berlin is the capital of Germany, a necessary condition for this belief to be justified is that you are justified in believing that there is such a place as Germany in the first place. You could not possibly be justified in believing the proposition that Berlin is the capital of Germany if you were not already justified in believing the proposition that Germany exists. So similarly, if libertarian free will is a necessary condition for justifiably believing any other proposition, as Tim Stratton wants to maintain, then we would have to be justified in believing that libertarian free will obtains before we could be justified in believing anything else. If this is right, then we have to be justified in believing in libertarian free will before we can justifiably believe in literally any other proposition. For if we believe some other proposition without first having justification for believing in libertarian freedom, then it might turn out that there is no libertarian freedom after all, and that, consequently, the original belief is unjustified. So the proponent of Stratton's argument seems to be committed to accepting the first premise of my argument. The second premise should also be fairly uncontroversial. If some belief is epistemically justified, then this just means that there is some reason which is either guaranteeing that the belief is true, or at least making it more probably true than not. That's just what epistemic justification means. If a proposition is not certainly true, and not even probably true, then it is just not justified. So the second premise is true by definition. The third premise is where things begin to get interesting. The third premise asserts that if libertarian free will is a necessary condition for epistemic justification, then the belief that libertarian free will obtains cannot be justified probabilistically. To see why this is so, consider what probabilistic justification consists in. To say that a proposition is probably true is to say that other justifiably believed propositions render it more likely true than false. Probabilities are always relative to something else. Some other justifiably believed propositions 
have to be making it more probably true than false. A proposition cannot be probably true all on its own, nor can it be probably true relative to unjustified propositions, for then there would be no justification to transmit. Some further propositions must be justifiably believed in order to tip the scales in favor of truth. As Timothy McGrew argues, to what body of evidence are epistemically probable claims related then? The natural answer is that, under all ordinary circumstances, they are related to our ostensible background knowledge, a set of beliefs which we take to be more or less unproblematic. This raises in an obvious, though informal way, the insufficiency of moderate foundationalism. When the stock of relatively unproblematic beliefs is exhausted by the regress, there is nothing left to confer a high epistemic probability on the basic beliefs. Hence, any version of foundationalism that appeals to the high epistemic probability of its basic beliefs is doomed from the outset. Epistemic probability cannot accrue from nothing. Here is where we run into the major problem for Stratton. Any further beliefs to which one might appeal in order to render their belief that libertarian free will obtains probable will themselves need to be justified. However, given premises 1 and 5, those supporting beliefs cannot themselves be justified until one has already justified their belief that libertarian free will obtains. Remember, given premise 1 and premise 5, libertarian free will is necessary for epistemic justification. Together, these premises entail that one must justifiably believe that they have libertarian free will before they can justifiably believe anything else. Hence, there is no possibility of using other beliefs to justify this belief that libertarian freedom obtains. No arguments can be constructed for the reality of libertarian freedom without begging the question. If libertarian freedom is a precondition for any justified beliefs, then all argumentation would assume libertarian freedom from the start because all argumentation presupposes justified beliefs. Consequently, the third premise is true. There is no inferential way to justify the belief that libertarian free will obtains if libertarian free will is indeed necessary for the possibility of justified beliefs. But what about the fourth premise? Perhaps the defender of Stratton's argument would want to maintain that we can actually know that libertarian free will obtains apart from any intervening arguments, but can instead know it directly and with certainty. This doesn't strike me as a very promising or plausible move. Even most believers in libertarian free will want to maintain that it is at least epistemically possible that determinism is true. For example, while alluding to this very sort of free-thinking argument, William Lane Craig acknowledges that determinism is epistemically possible, saying, Determinism could be true, but it's very hard to see how it could ever be rationally affirmed. No one, to my knowledge, argues that we have some sort of logical proof against determinism or decisive evidence for libertarian free will. And if the defender of Stratton's argument wants to maintain that libertarian free will is known non-inferentially and with certainty, then the free-thinking argument becomes superfluous and pointless since they would already know with certainty that they have libertarian freedom without this argument. Hence, in order to rescue the free-thinking argument from my argument in this way, the proponent of the free-thinking argument will no longer be able to base his belief in libertarian freedom on the free-thinking argument. But for anyone who does not take themselves to have absolute certainty that libertarian free will obtains, the fourth premise of my argument should be accepted as true. As we have already seen, the defender of the free-thinking argument should want to affirm the fifth premise since it merely states the principle which undergirds the third premise of Stratton's argument. The sixth premise just states the logical entailment of premises 3 through 6, and the seventh premise is just the logical entailment of premises 1, 5, and 6. Unfortunately, however, the conclusion of this argument negates the fourth premise of Stratton's argument. The only plausible way out of my argument is to deny the fifth premise, which requires one to deny Stratton's third premise. Conversely, if one affirms Stratton's third premise, this appears to commit them to the conclusion of my argument, which will require them to reject Stratton's fourth premise. In short, 
if one affirms premise 3 of Stratton's argument, then they have to deny premise 4. If one affirms premise 4, as I do, then one has to deny premise 3, as I do. Ironically then, if one wants to preserve epistemic justification, then they have to deny the key premise of the free-thinking argument. <laughs>